All right, we're going to continue finishing up uh, practice test two on common assessment two, and we're going to jump right into only number 11, uh, and we're going to deal with absolute value inequalities. And there's a lot of similarities between absolute value inequalities with absolute value equations and also with compound inequalities. So we're going to see a bunch of topics covered on this one question. So we're going to dive right in, and I'm going to start with the same note that we had for number 10. You're going to see this note continue on number 12 and 13 as well. And the deal is we have to isolate the grouping symbol. So if you remember, that's what we did the first thing in number 10. We're going to do the same thing here. We have to isolate the grouping symbol first. And as we know, absolute value is a grouping symbol. So we have our absolute value bars. And what's happening with it? There's that negative 2 out there. And we have to isolate the absolute value bars. We cannot distribute through absolute value. But what we can do is undo that negative 2. So the question is, how do we undo that negative 2? So in this case, we're going to uh, undo negative 2. And the way we do that, what's happening to it? It's being multiplied. So when we undo it, we're going to divide. And so we're going to divide by negative 2 first. And that's going to create a couple of interesting things. The first is you look at the left-hand side. Negative 2 on the top, negative 2 on the bottom. That's a giant 1, and it cancels out. And it leaves us with our grouping symbol. On the right-hand side, we have 30 divided by negative 2, and that's negative 15. In the meantime, what did we just do? We divided both sides of an inequality by a negative. So what is that going to happen? What's going to happen? That inequality symbol is going to change directions. So we have to be careful on that step. So look at all the neat things that just happened on the first step. We have to know to isolate the grouping symbol. We have to know that that's multiplication. And we have to know to change the direction of an inequality symbol when we divide both sides by a negative. All those things in just one step. That's why I like this question. So now. Our grouping symbol is isolated. What do we do? We have to undo absolute value. And that's very similar to number 10. How do we undo absolute value? Case 1, what's inside stays the same. Case 2, what's inside is the opposite. OK, so case 1, what's inside stays the same. Case 2, what's inside is opposite. We're going to build case 1 and case 2. So uh, that's very similar to number 10. And so now we have case 1. What's inside is the same. x plus 4 is the same. Everything else comes along with it. And then case 2, what's inside is the opposite. Now remember I said in number 10 there's a faster way to show what's inside. I'm going to do that right now. So case 2, what's inside is the opposite. I'm going to show the faster way. How do we show what's inside is the opposite? I just change the signs and that's how I show that what's inside is the opposite okay so the opposite I'm changing the signs everything else remains the same now if you've been using the textbook you'll see that the textbook shows a little bit different way I prefer mine of course uh, so you choose whichever method you find most helpful uh, and just know that if you're choosing to do the textbook way, you can use the online tutorial videos from the textbook's website to, uh, to help you. Anyway, finishing up case one and case two. Now that we have uh, case one and case two set up, we're going to solve each, each, each case. So I'm going to solve case one first. I have x, uh, and I need to undo a plus four. So I'm going to subtract four on both sides. And this is uh, where the part is the only simple part. So I have x is greater than or equal to negative 19. On the right-hand side for case 2, I have negative x minus 4. I undo my minus 4 with a plus 4. And now pay attention because something else is about to happen. I have negative x greater than or equal to negative 11. x is not by itself. I have that negative sign there. So I can multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. And there it is again. We just divided both sides of an inequality by a negative. So the sign changes. So for case 1, x is greater than or equal to negative 19. For case 2, 
x is less than or equal to 11. And now we get to the crazy part of absolute value inequalities. Now what we need to do is make our compound inequality. So how do we make this a compound inequality? We're missing a word, right? We're missing and or or between these two things. So how do we know which is and? We look at our inequality statement that we had once the absolute value bars were isolated. So we have our inequality statement from when the absolute value bars were isolated and we read it out loud. And when we read it out loud, if we say the words less than, what will end up happening is a compound inequality that is an and, an intersection. If we say greater than, Notice how I'm spelling it. If we say greater than, we will have an or compound inequality, the union. Okay, so we have less than and, great or than. So if you're reading this out loud, the absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than negative 15, we clearly have an or absolute value, so, or compound inequality. So that is the word that's missing. This is now an or compound inequality. So we're looking for all the values that are greater than or equal to negative 19 or less than or equal to 11. And so what we're going to do is sketch the graph just like we would do with compound inequalities. We have uh, a value happening at negative 19 and a value happening at positive 11. And we're going to make our open circle closed circle. So at negative 19, we're going to have a closed circle because it's or equal to. And since it's greater than, an arrow going to the right. And at 11, we're going to have another closed circle because it's or equal to. And an arrow to the left because it's less than. All that's left to do is check. And how do we check the answers? We say things out loud. So we pick all the values out here. And we think of all these numbers, negative 20, negative 21. Are those numbers bigger than negative 19 or less than 11? Now make sure you heard what you just said. Bigger than negative 19 or less than 11. These numbers are less than 11. So that definitely qualifies because it could be either or. So it's or less than 11, then that definitely checks out. That is part of the solution set. So that section of the graph checks out. Now we consider all the numbers in the middle. Are these numbers in the middle either bigger than negative 19 or less than 11? And uh, uh, yeah, they're both. So most definitely these, these are part of the solution set. They definitely, they're bigger than negative 19 and less than 11 as a matter of fact. So those check out. And now we're going to test the third area of the graph. Are these numbers out here either bigger than negative 19 or less than 11? Now these numbers are not less than 11, but guess what? They're bigger than negative 19. And remember, we're talking about or. It could be this or that. Okay, so if these out here are bigger than negative 19, definitely part of the solution. So what does this mean? This means the solution set is all real numbers. The entire graph of values in the real numbers, that is the solution. So we're dealing with all real numbers or all real solutions, infinite solutions, there is our answer. Okay, so we have to be careful because of the word or, this is what checks out. And you can use this to go back to help with your understanding of compound inequalities as well. How do we check our, our answer? So remember, we isolate the grouping symbol, we uh, undo whatever is needed to, then we undo absolute value, case one, case two. What's the word for a compound inequality if we're dealing with absolute value? And then check your answers, run it through, read it out loud. And that's how we can uh, solve absolute value inequalities. Thank you.